YouTube, Bray from Badger Tuners here with another video. Today we're building a small block LS engine. I'm going to show you how we do it. What I'm not going to do is talk about nothing throughout the whole video. I'm actually going to show you step by step what I do, how I do it. CompCam seems to believe that with the cam we're using and this combination that I put together, that we should be around 700 horsepower. I think conservatively it would be more like five to 600 horsepower range. I will share those numbers with you in later videos. Uh, however, for this video, we're just gonna go through the nuts and bolts and put this thing together. If you are genuinely interested in building your own LS engine or interested in having me build an engine for you, this, in, this video will be interesting to you. If you're interested in listening to people drone on about nothing, then this video is probably isn't for you. There's plenty of those videos out. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, so we got the block back from the machine shop. It's been board honed, decked, and a line honed. And so what they do in the uh, line home process is they cut the caps here and then they run a bar and resize the, the hole so hopefully you can see the uh, machine marks that are in there from the line home going back and forth. All right so the first step that we have to do is we have to go over here and clean out the cutting fluid and our bores. Then the next step that we'll do is we'll set up our micrometer and dial board gauge. The dial board gauge is what we'll actually use to check our measurements. All right, so I've got our micrometer set to two inches, 559 thousandths. All right, so I'm gonna put it here in our fixture. get this dial bore gauge set to zero. All right, so now, now I'm ready to check all my main bores. At least my dial bore gauge is set. So the next step is I'm gonna torque everything down. I'm gonna get these main caps cleaned off and torque down ready to go.
All right, so before we can measure anything, what we're gonna do is use our Starrett micrometer. This is a two inch micrometer. <clears throat> Goes two to three inches. And I'll put it in my fixture here. And then I'll set up my dial bore caliper. Here and I'm hoping you can see this here. Move it over here so you can see it, so I can zero it out. You can see that it's pretty much there. All right. So what I did was I set it to two inches, 751 thousandths, which is the outside specification, uh, OEM specification for the main bearing bores of an LS. It's perfect, right on the money. 751. 751 and two tenths. And about a little, take that. Right at 751, 751. It's about four tenths short. 751. That's about three tenths, so it's pretty good. It's pretty one tenth difference. Not a problem at all. All right, so obviously since my Dial bore gauge has to go all the way back. I have to break these three main caps to uh, measure the last two. So you pretty much get the gist of it. And then we'll move on from there. All right, YouTube. So I've got all of our main bore clearances checked and everything comes out to about within two tenths, one tenth, two tenths, two tenths, and two tenths. That looks pretty darn good. So the OEM specifications are two inches, 750 thousandths to 751 thousandths. What we're doing is we torqued it in four steps. All right, and this is our ARP fastener Torx Vax. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is break all of our bolts loose, pull our main caps off, and we're gonna put our bearing halves in and get a measurement from there. After that, I'll take the crankshaft, we'll mic the crankshaft, record everything, and that'll give us our true bearing clearance. All right, now all the bolts have been removed. They're on our surface. Something that's really important that I'd like to do is uh, tighten down all of our main studs. The reason why I'm going back and doing this now is when you take them off, they like to loosen up, like some of these here. And so before I forget, I'm going to re-tighten all these down. ARP says when you install these that you're not supposed to crank them down finger tight only, so I don't put any power behind it when I lock them in. Then we get snug. So there's two different ways that you can take these main caps off. One, you can hold it like this without hitting your thumb. See, it's 
kind of a pain in the ass to get them off that way. You can do it like this, which I like to do my same method. Much easier. Just want to make sure when you're going in there that you're not marring the block or the steel with this. I'm only using this little edge. So that way, when I put them in, if I feel any kind of dirt or crunching, then I'll take them back off, clean underneath it, and do it again. You always want to make sure that the groove side of the bearings go on the block side. You can see this groove. are completely dry, which these are not. So I'm going to clean them, install the bearing cap, or the bearing half, and put them on. Alright, so for the next step, I'm going to take my mic and we're going to get all of our numbers off this crankshaft. Start with the main journals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it using this little ratchet up here. And what it'll do by doing that is it'll give way at some point. It'll only apply. A certain amount of torque every time that I check it so that way I get accurate results and repeatable results time after time after time. So for that one we get uh, 4 reluctor wheel. Later we will be changing it to a Gen 3. The reason why I have this with a Gen 4 reluctor wheel is that almost all the crankshafts today are Chinese billet uh, blanks and they're machined in the USA by uh, all your top name Crankshafts, the only way that you're going to get a true 100% made in the USA steel forged crankshaft is if you buy a billet crankshaft and those start around three grand. So if you're like me, you don't have a wallet full of money, then your alternative is to buy a GM. Crankshaft, you can get it at uh, any dealership. They sell them um, in Gen 4s currently. They don't sell them with the Gen 3 reluctor wheel, but that's not a problem. You can pull this off and put it in the line and uh, save yourself a lot of money. Okay, so we've got all of our main bearing journals recorded, all the sizes, they all look really good. 
as well as all of our rod bearing journal. From our crankshaft sizes, they all look really well. All right, so for the next step, what we're gonna do is I've got everything torqued down and I'm gonna take the numbers that we've got here for our crankshaft journal uh, outer diameter and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did last time is I'm gonna use my mic and I'm gonna set my dial caliper or my dial board gauge to every exact size that I recorded with my mic for every journal. So I'll use that number as a zero. So we're gonna start off with two inches, 559 thousandths even. Looks good. Here's the moment of truth. And I've got right on two thousands. right at two thousandths inch of clearance. That might be a little on the tight side generally. Uh, the rule of thumb is one thousandths per inch of journal diameter, which would give us a bearing clearance of two and a half thousandths. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is find another set of bearings. We could either go half size. Uh, another option would be to sand off some of the journal material, which is really kind of the last resort. I really don't like doing that. So what I'd much rather do is mix and match a set of bearings. And what we could do is get a set of bearings that are set for uh, 1,000 extra clearance. And we can take the lower bearing halves or the thicker of the two. And have them in there. So that's probably what we're gonna have to do. At least for that. So I'm going to reset my next one to 2558. All right, we've got it. We'll move on to the next one. Right around 2,000, two and a half thousand for that one, which is great. Thousand for that one. Excellent. 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 Right at two and a half thousand. Perfect. Again, right at two and a half thousand. Okay, so that's perfect. So we've got two and a half thousand clearance on both these bearings. And what we'll have to do is crack all three of these so we can check our last two. 